Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and this is episode 37 of my Billionaire Minecraft series, where I will collect 1 billion iron ingots, gold ingots, diamonds, and emeralds using the All the Mod 6 mod pack in modded Minecraft 1.16. In today's episode, I am going to process my emerald ore into emeralds, so let's get started. So there are a lot of different choices for how I could do my processing. Um, obviously, we can do the regular old smelting, but I have something a little bit bit more efficient in mind and that would be to pulverize it using the pulverizer from the thermal series of mods uh, thermal expansion and by doing this method we can actually get approximately 2.5 emeralds for every emerald ore if you notice here it does say additional chance 50 percent so the base method with using the pulverizer would provide about 2.5 emeralds per ore However, I can do better than that. If we add some a catalyst down here in the pulverizer, we can actually up the odds a little bit. And if we actually right click on that and actually find the um, correct tab here, which would be this one right here, it actually gives a little bit of a modifier and will actually allow me to make more emeralds. So that is what I'm going to use today. So the first thing is first, let's grab the emerald ore. So in the last two, two weeks or so, I have actually had four, um, four of the tier eight void miners going. And let's go down here just to take a look at what I have, uh, have going. So right now I have uh, four different tier eight void miners and three of them are actually set with the, uh, not that one. Three of them have the uh, gemstone ore miner in them. And they also have different laser lenses here. If you'll notice, two of these miners actually have this, I think it's lime. Uh, it's lime or lime green or something like that laser lens. And basically, these uh, two of the void miners are getting lots and lots of emerald ore. If we find that down here, 27.81% uh, of the ores are emeralds. And that adds up really fast. Originally, I actually had two of these set up with the metallic ore miner. However, I had by far more iron ore than anything else so i decided to switch that up so let's get out of there before the zombies attack me and actually let's uh grab some stuff and actually i just need to grab one thing real fast and that is my black hole unit with emerald ore now if you'll notice here i do have lots and lots of ores i've had those void miners going for about two weeks i actually did take a vacation and for the most part my computer was running and the server was running and so now I have about 220 million of uh, each one of these ores. So that's a really good starting point towards getting uh, 1 billion uh, emeralds, diamonds, uh, gold ingots, and uh, iron, iron ingots. So let's grab this. What I'm going to do in the meantime is let's go ahead and replace that black hole unit with another one. So that we can get... Okay, so that was weird. Let's place that down, and that should get uh, that should pick up lots of emerald ore very quickly. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to travel to my uh, new base area or my uh, processing area. I think is what I'm going to use this for. So what I'm going to do is I will be over there in just a second. So in between episodes, I built a new building. It's just basically a husk of a building. It has a top floor here or a base level floor, and it does have a basement as well. Uh, there's nothing else going on with it. Uh, before I get really started building, let's go ahead and turn on the reactor in the basement here so that this base will have power. I don't have uh, power hooked up to anything yet, but let's go ahead and turn this on. And that should get going pretty quickly. Uh, let's make sure everything's still running as it should. Uh, I did alter my reactor between episodes a little bit by adding some of the coolant manifolds. And I may explore that in a future episode, but basically it just makes it a little bit more efficient and does, um, it does make the reactor hold quite a bit more of the liquid sil uh, sodium. So that is just another byproduct of having those coolant manifolds. So let's uh, make sure that this is uh, producing the amount of steam that it needs to, and it looks like it is. This turbine is qu very quickly spooling up, and that's cool. So what I will need to do at some point in the episode is hook the power up to everything I'm about to build, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So let's run over here and let's start setting some stuff up. 
So the first thing is uh, I want to use pulverizers, and I have a bunch of pulverizers with me. But I want to make flint, and that's going to be the first thing that I'm going to do here. I'm going to make flint just to help the pulverizers make a little bit more emeralds than they were would um, without them. So how I'm going to make flint is I'm going to use material stonework factories, and I'm going to make gravel with those. So if we take a look at the episode, or not the episodes, but the ways I can make flint, uh, I can make flint with this recipe, and that's actually something I considered. Um, I've used mystical agriculture in the past, and I could use uh, the mod thermal expansion with a phytogenic isolator to actually make these essences. Uh, but that's not the route I'm going to go today. I think I am going to go the route of I'm going to use an enrichment chamber on gravel to make flint, and to make the gravel, I'm going to use these material stonework factories. So let's grab those, let's grab some energy conduit as well. And I'm going to be using the mechanism ultimate universal cable for that. And let's start setting these guys up. So what I'm going to do is along this back wall here is where I'm going to have these material stonework factories. So in the floor here, I'm just going to set down the conduit. So I can use my pickaxe right here just to bulldoze that out really quickly. And let's lay down this conduit. At some point, I will need to hook all of this up to the reactor, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So let's go ahead and set down these material stonework factories, and I'm just going to put them all basically side by side by side of all of each other. And now I need to configure these things, and then I also need to add water and lava to all of them as well. So let's see here. Uh, first of all, we are going to generate cobblestone, and then we are going to grind it, I believe. So let me double check that. So if I go to the material stonework factory, or actually it would probably be easier if I uh, did that. If we uh, right click here and we go to the cobblestone section, I should be able to find the gravel pretty quickly here. And okay, so it's just uh, diamond pickaxe once and nothing for anything else. So that what we're gonna do is that. And now I just need to hit these over. And um, I also need to provide these with water and lava uh, and, and that will and energy and that will allow this to make cobblestone and then it will grind it into gravel. So let me see if there's any lava around here because actually I did did not bring lava with me, which was kind of a mistake probably. So there doesn't uh, look to be any gravel. Okay, so there, it looks like there's lava up here. I can also just go to the nether to get lava. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm actually going to set all of these up uh, off camera because this is going to take quite a while. I need to switch all of these uh, to crushing and then nothing, nothing, and nothing. And then I will be able to get these two run. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I will be right back. So I finally have all of these set up. There's one more thing I would like to do, and that is to add some upgrades from the industrial foregoing mod. So I'm going to add the efficiency, processing, and speed tier 2s, and basically that will make these go a lot faster. So actually, uh, can I even add? So it looks like I'm going to have to add these one at a time, which just kind of slows things down. But uh, maybe if I use my mouse, my mouse wheel, yeah, that'll that'll make things a little bit easier and just roll down on that, it will add one of each. I don't think adding any more of any of them will actually benefit. Yeah, I don't even think it will let me. So let's just add one of each of these, and basically what these will do is make these machines faster at producing the gravel that the enriching uh, chambers will need. So after we get this done, I should probably hook up the power to make sure that these are going to operate as intended. So let's go ahead and do the last seven and then get that power hooked up. I'm not super sure what the cleanest way to hook the power up is going to be, but I have an idea of what I am going to do realistically here. And what I'm going to do is let's punch a hole through this wall. And let's punch a hole somewhere through this wall. That is not where I need it to be. Um, there's fine. So this basement, if you haven't noticed, the basement of the um, building I built in the last episode is definitely a little bit bigger. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It is deeper, that is. 
So let's grab some of this universal or ultimate universal cable. And what I'm going to do is run this straight down from here and hook that up there. And then I need to come back down here and figure out where that is and just run it. Let me see if I can hook that up. Cool. It's really nice to have the reach enchantment, the reach uh, seven enchantment on this. It just makes things a lot easier as far as actually reaching things. So let's punch a hole right here. Um, let's see if we can't weedle our way through there. Uh, let's fill this back up. And now I can run my energy conduit right here. So that's cool. And it makes things pretty easy here. Let's see exactly where I want to enter the room. I think what I'm going to do is enter from right here and just run it kind of across the ceiling of the room until it needs to be dispersed to different locations, in which case I can just run it straight down like that. And I do have plenty more of this stuff in here, so let me grab some more of that. And now I can finish up the routing of the conduit here. It's not going to be the, the uh, greatest looking thing in the world, but it should work just fine. So I don't have this connected up quite yet over here. So let's do that. And now we have power. So let's go ahead and neaten these things up real fast. I don't need that there anymore, and I shouldn't need this over here anymore. So that is fantastic. Let's see if these things are running yet. We are getting gravel. So that's really, really nice to see. Uh, I should have some black hole units somewhere in here. I'm not sure if I brought two or not. Uh, I'm going to need one later. So unfortunately, I don't have one to spare, and I should have brought another one. But what we're going to do now is we're going to grab some... We're going to grab the ultimate enriching factories and the speed upgrades, because we need those for the enriching factories, as well as... Do I have my configurator? I do, because I will need that. And then I also need this ultimate logistical... Um, transporter here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, gravel uh, out of the top and we're going to move it to a couple of ultimate enriching factories and I think I'm going to put them maybe here and here. Uh, it's not going to be, you know what, I'm going to put them maybe here and here and I'm going to do that specifically because I want an empty black hole unit in between them. At least it's going to be empty at first. So let me grab one of those. That was a mistake. Um, yeah, I just need one of them for right now. Uh, this one has the emerald ore in it, so I can't use it for what I want here in a second. So we're, what we're going to do is let's hook up the energy. And I'm probably going to have to wheedle that down and around. But that's not a problem. Uh, I don't want it to be apparent from the surface. So I do need to put, I don't need that marble, I know that, so let's get rid of it. So what I'm going to do is the ultimate enriching factory one here and then one here. What we're going to do is, in terms of sightedness, I'm going to input from the top and then I'm going to output to the right. I'm going to turn auto eject on and then this one is going to be uh, very similarly configured except it will be outputting to its left with the auto eject also always on. So let me grab the Supreme Black Hole unit that is empty. And now what I want to do is I want to hook up the Ultimate Logistical Transporter real fast. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I actually want to disconnect. Uh, whoops, I have this in wrench mode. So I, I'm just holding shift and then using my mouse wheel here. And I'm changing it to configurate mode. That way I can actually disconnect the Black Hole unit from being connected to that. And now what I want to do is I'm going to run this from the... Uh, stoneworks factories here and I need to have them pull out the the uh, gravel that I'm making into the ultimate enriching factories so let me see that's not working okay it is working but the gravel is going into other locations so basically all I need to do here is just set all of these up to be uh, extract and the gravel should go to the right location at that point. Um, between now and then, though, I might need to empty out some stuff out of these material stoneworks factories that shouldn't be here. 
and I'm actually even surprised that it will allow the cobblestone to enter because it's not um, really supposed to be here as far as I know. Uh, the gravel's fine there. So all of this um, is kind of not where it needs to be. So what I want to do with the ultimate enriching factories is a couple things here. I'm going to turn the auto sort on on both of these. And then I'm going to apply some speed upgrades. And I can do that in two ways. I can either uh, right click with the speed upgrades in my hand or I can insert them right here. And we'll uh, basically apply them one at a time. So basically it's going to make the machines faster but they are going to use more power. Um, once we see the speed upgrades uh, actually apply we can see that the energy usage is jumping quite dramatically. However the speed is also jumping. So the ultimate enriching factory is just basically uh, an enriching factory that has been upgraded. So let me take a look at that. So basically, I in the past, I used this enrichment chamber. However, there are four more upgrades to it. I'm using the most upgraded version of this. So basically, it can do, what, nine things at a time. And it can do them very quickly once I have those upgrades in there. So that's really, really nice to have. So what I'm going to do real fast is I'm going to clean out all of the uh, junk out of these material stoneworks factories if there's any junk left, and I'm sure there is. And actually, it doesn't look like there's much, so I might as well just do this manually right now. And then I can go ahead and throw away all this uh, stupid cobblestone that shouldn't be here. So actually, I should throw away the gravel too. I have nowhere to put it, to be honest, and I'm producing plenty of it. So that's not going to be a problem. So let's get rid of all this cobblestone. Uh, that gravel can actually be taken away, so that's fine. Um, all of the gravel is fine. It's just the cobblestone that is not in the first two slots. That's kind of the problem here. So the next step in all of this is to uh, actually start to use things here. Uh, start to use that flint. And what I am going to do is let's just throw this in here. I have plenty of space. Let's grab the pulverizers and actually first I need to make an ME system um, because the way I plan to do this automation is a little bit different from how I've done things in the past and I'm going to use an ME system here. It's not going to be anything like super special but it is going to be a different method than I've used before. So let's grab a or the storage buses. Let's grab a stack of pulverizers for right now and Let's get started with this. So first off, I'm gonna slap a storage bus on this Supreme Black Hole unit so that the ME system that I'm about to build will have access to the uh, flint here. So I don't really have any specific location where I need to build this, uh, the ME system that is. And I'm kind of thinking that I would like to build it here. You know what, let's build it this is going to kind of be a little bit odd on my part, but I'm going to build it kind of like here, maybe. Uh, let's make the ME controller do something like this. And I think I should be able to have the ME drive here. And it should be a valid structure, even though it's uh, kind of a weird shape here. And then on top of that, I need to actually grab some conduit here. Or uh, some cabling, anyways. So let's grab some of the cable out of here. Do I have any regular cable? I didn't grab any non-dense cable, which is kind of a dumb move, but you know what? I actually have wireless access to my, my main ME system. I can't quite reach it from here, but if I fly a little bit this way, I can actually reach it. I'm not actually very far from my main base. Uh, so let's fly over here and let's grab some some of this stuff. I don't need very much, so seven is more than enough. So let's just fly back real fast and let's continue with this build. So to hook up the terminal, I just need one little blue cover cable here and then I have my terminal block, which I'm gonna put right here. And then I have some of the uh, 64K ME storage cells. In all honesty, I don't know that I need any of them, but I'm going to ha I'm gonna put them in there just in case don't really think I need them though. So let's throw them in here. And that's all 10. And now what I need to do is actually hook this thing up to power. And it's actually really, really super simple if I just dig down here. Um, and I meant to do one block. So let's replace that. 
I should have access to the energy cable right there. And then if I replace this ME controller, I think this is a valid structure, but I'm not 100% sure. It looks like it is, so that's cool. Um, normally when it's not a valid structure, it'll light up red. So if we click here, we can see that I do have access to it, so that is fantastic. So now what I need to do is I need to actually hook up that storage bus. And once that becomes active, I should see that I have lots and lots of flint. So that's really cool. I actually do need to grab one of those. And then uh, this Supreme Black Hole unit right here, I also need to hook it up to the MA system. I'm just going to place it right here. And I need to hook that up with another storage bus. So what I'm going to do is stick a storage bus right here. And in the meantime, I am going to set it to only hold the emerald, emerald ore by hitting that. And then I'm going to set this to a negative priority. So this one right here, um, I'm going to do kind of the same thing here. So let's hit that twice and set it to a negative priority. And by setting it to a negative priority, I'm telling the ME system to not throw things into the Supreme Black Hole unit unless the drives over here are full because this is a priority of zero because I have not changed it. So that's what's going on there. So now let's get to actually building the uh, beef of this or the actual uh, what's going to be producing the emeralds from the emerald ore. So let's jump up here and let's get started. So what I want to do is I'm going to change this to 3x3 mode and I'm going to create a mess up here uh, to be quite honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start punching holes in my floor. And I'm going to be setting up uh, basically the area where I'm going to be setting up my automations here. So I'm going to be using ME interfaces along with pulverizers. And actually, I need my red print. I think I have a red print in here somewhere. Fantastic. So I'm going to use pulverizer and ME interfaces to set up my uh, automation today. So um, let's set up the ME interfaces first. So basically every, I'm going to have, uh, and this isn't going to be a perfect pattern, I don't think. And actually, if I moved it over one, I could make it a perfect pattern. So let's do that. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to end up removing most of these MA interfaces. But just for the sake of making it easy to put them down, I'm going to do that. So yeah. So here is the pattern I'm going to use. Um, and now what I need to do is place pulverizers next to them. And to place the pulverizers, actually the first pulverizer I need to set down, and I need to configure this. So what I'm going to do configuration wise is I'm going to tell it to insert and extract out the back and I'm going to do auto input and auto output um, and I need to okay so I emptied its configuration by shift and right clicking on air and now I'm just gonna right click on that and it should have the the uh, it should basically copy the, how I have this pulverizer set up and so when I place down additional pulverizers they should be set up the same way. So yes, it does look like it's working. So what we're gonna do is around these ME interfaces that are just kind of floating here, is I'm going to put down a bunch of pulverizers and I need to have their backs to the ME interface because that is the side that I have chosen to configure so that it is interacting with the uh, ME interfaces here. So that's cool, and now I need to do ones on the back as well. So hopefully I have all of these ones on the back side set up correctly. We're facing the right direction. I think they should be. So that is how I'm going to have these set up. Now let's go ahead and hook up the ME interfaces to the ME system. And that's going to be pretty easy. Uh, these ME interfaces, let's do a smart cable from here and then dense cable from then on out. And honestly, the dense cable isn't actually needed just yet because I'm not gonna have that many channels. I have, what, seven of the ME interfaces right now. So I do need to, I need to drop these down because I do need to have energy access to the bottom of the pulverizers. And actually it might be, 
it might look better if I actually have the connections be the non-dense variety but you know what I don't have the non-dense for or don't have enough of the non-dense variety so let's just hook him up with the dense variety for now in the future I might uh, swap some of this out to make it look a little bit neater but it will work for now okay so a dog or a some sort of mob just barked near here and that was kind of scared me so those emmy interfaces are hooked up so what i want to do now is let's grab a stack of the emerald ore and what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell my emmy interfaces to do a couple things okay let's get rid of that i don't like that you're making loud noises i don't like it cool Okay, so what I'm going to do with these guys is I'm actually going to tell them to hold things. And we can do that by uh, doing this right here. So basically by putting a stack in here, I'm telling the ME interface to hold 64 emerald ore if it can in its own inventory right here. And then I'm going to do the same with the flint. So if we take a look at the pulverizers, the pulverizers have a pulled those emerald ore and the flint from the emmy interface and basically they're not running because they don't have power yet but this seems to be a little system that should work pretty well so let's go ahead and do that for the rest of the emmy interfaces just going to tell them to hold the emerald ore and flint and we can tell that they are hooked up to the emmy system because as soon as i tell it to hold the emerald ore it's actually importing it automatically so that's a really cool feature of these ME interfaces is that it can actually hold items or pull them from the system and then hold them. So that seems to have worked. Now what I need to do is actually um, grab some energy conduit and hook these things up to power and get them rolling. So I have energy conduit right here. So let's kind of start out with that. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna run a strand in the front and then a strand in the back and then connect up the, um, actually I'm not sure if that's how I'm gonna do that just yet. Yeah, I think it'll be fine if I do it that way. There's no reason why it won't be fine. Uh, this is gonna be kind of a little bit messy from the bottom side, but it's not, I'm not too concerned about it. I'm gonna fill in some, some of the stone to make it look neater from the top side, but from the bottom side, it's gonna kind of look like a mess, but that's okay. Cool. So all of those should be powered. Let's make sure that they are running. And it looks like they are. Uh, they're not running very fast. Oh, there's one thing I totally forgot to do. So I should be having some emeralds in here. We can see that. I do need to set up another black hole unit though. Um, so let's grab that from here. And I'm gonna tell this to only hold emeralds. So let me grab my storage bus and I should have another storage bus or so. In fact, it's probably my inventory right now. Yep, there they are, I uh, just didn't see them. So what I need to do is find a place for this Supreme Black Hole unit and I'm just gonna put it right here. No reason not to. I'm gonna tell it to hold emeralds and actually I'm gonna pull the emeralds out of my ME system and I'm gonna tell it to hold emeralds. I'm going to give it a positive priority. So the first place anything in this ME system is tried to, anytime it tries to deposit something, it will try to deposit it into the black hole unit here. So this is empty. Let's go ahead and place that down. And it should start throwing the emeralds in there right now. So that's really cool. So what I'm gonna do is let's get rid of the junk from my inventory real fast. And let's pull out the rest of the emeralds from my ME system and let's put them back in. And when I put them back in, they should go to that black hole unit. So yep, it looks like they did. So that is pretty fantastic. Uh, one more thing I need to do, and then I think it's about time to wrap up the episode, is I want to upgrade my pulverizers, and I can do that in a series of ways. Sorry about that. Totally hit the wrong button there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to add some resonance integral components as well as flux linkage amplifiers which basically just speed up the machines. So let's take a look at how slow, how painfully slow these pulverizers are. And then let's add these guys. So that makes it quite a bit faster. It also pulls a lot more power, but that's not really a problem. It's just 320 RF per tick per machine. 
that is easily easily doable since I am generating about 220,000 RF per tick over there so what I'm gonna do real fast is I am going to upgrade the rest of these machines off camera that's gonna take just a hot minute and once I have all of that done I will be right back so everything is done I rerouted the cables a little bit uh, just to make things a little bit neater from the top side with the way I had my energy conduit I wasn't actually able going to be able to cover up some of the stone from the top side so i just wanted to make it a look a little bit neater so i did reroute a little bit of my me cabling and my energy conduit here um, but that's not really a big deal uh, the biggest deal here is that i actually forgot to account for the extra gravel that my system is producing because if we take a look at the pulverizer episode or recipe for the emerald ore we're actually producing uh, gravel as a byproduct, and right now it doesn't have anywhere to go except into my drives here. However, that's actually not a good solution, as eventually I will produce far too many emeralds. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Um, let's take a look, do I have any flint? And yeah, I have plenty of flint. It does look like my flint supply is going up, so right now, um, all of this down here is going to keep up with what I have up above with the pulverizers. However, I think between episodes, I'm going to add a lot more pulverizers. I'm going to use the same system, uh, but I'm going to add more, a lot more ME interfaces, obviously. Say like, uh, for example, I'll add one here and then I'll probably add one here, uh, here and so on and so forth. Um, taking up most of the top side of this room, uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. That'd take quite a while. Um, and basically it's just the same system just replicated more um, So I do need to set up a storage uh, solution for all this gravel because eventually these drives will fill up with gravel And probably rather quickly to be honest So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna add a storage bus on top here I'm gonna tell it to only store gravel and I'm going to give it a positive priority not quite as high as the uh, black hole unit with the uh, emeralds but uh, positive nonetheless because I want them to go or the gravel to go into the supreme black hole unit rather than into these drives. So uh, one thing I could have done is added an export bus and then exported all of the gravel that's already in the system uh, into that black hole unit. But it's not really a problem as I don't think these drives will really be used for anything to be honest. So that is cool and I think that is a... I think that's a good stopping point because the system is fully operational and producing lots and lots of emeralds. Over the, just the last few minutes, I've already produced 41,000 emeralds and the system is going to run all of the time, so that's going to add up rather quickly. So in today's episode, I set up this system to process emerald ore into emeralds. I'm using material stoners factories to make gravel. I'm using that gravel and I'm turning that into flint, which is then used by pulverizers up here to process emerald ore a little bit more efficiently than normal into emeralds and gravel as a byproduct. So that is really, really cool. If you enjoyed today's episode, feel free to drop a like down below. If there's anything I could have done better or differently, just let me know in the comments down below as I do try to read all of the comments. Uh, if you enjoy large scale automation in modern Minecraft, definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and I will see you next time.